Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 2. Today is episode number 45. If you guys do enjoy the content, then be sure to leave a like, as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm at the moment. Feel free to subscribe, drop a follow on Twitch, and hopefully you enjoy the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. Alright, here we go. We are here for another stream, another recording session, and we're starting off with the Panos... 500 horsepower invitational we're going to be beginning with road atlanta moving on to sebring silverstone and then laguna seca and for this we're taking a very heavily upgraded lotus carlton let's go all right here we go so we're going to begin with our first event road atlanta we're going to be driving against a ferrari with this so uh i'm very much hoping that this lotus can do do me a solid here And so far, it is. This is so severely unstable. This is the daftest thing ever. A 500 horsepower Lotus Carlton. Sorry, 497. Pretty much 500 horsepower of mania. When I'm not with you, I'm not me. So yeah, today I watched um, day two of the Estonia rally. So far, thoroughly enjoying watching rallying. A lot more exciting than uh, Formula 1 ever was. Uh, maybe old school Formula 1 still might have been a bit more exciting. But that was back when like strategies mattered and things could change and drivers were racing. Now it's just rubbish. You can see actually the uh, roll cage inside the car, which I think is actually quite a cool addition to this game. I'm not 100% sure if it was in Motorsport 1, but I had never really seen any like road cars get fitted with roll cages. So I'm made to believe that this is just for this game when they added it. Obviously, they added it in later games, but they added it as um, its own upgrade rather than under, uh, what's it called? Weight reduction. With you, not me. I've got a very angry Ferrari F40 on my ass here. Holy crap, that was awesome. There's a five-way battle that breaks GP. Yeah, there was, wasn't there? I forgot about that. I didn't really pay attention too much, though, 
to Formula One. It just... It's not my thing. Like, it's... The past two or three years, right? And I, I'm going to blame one man. I'm blaming Michael Massey. Because the way that the rules have been... The, the past two or three years... With just how ridiculous the decisions have been. Mix that in with the toxic community that Formula One is. It's just so incredibly toxic. You can't even look on the internet without a news reporter slandering a driver or this, that and the other. And it's just ridiculous. It's such a negative atmosphere. For Formula One, a sport that should be enjoyable to watch... It's just so negative, and it's, it's almost like the football of the racing world at this point. Yeah, he, I mean, he's been let go, but that still doesn't matter about the damage that he's done. Like, it's still he still fixed a race at the end of 2021. Like, obviously, obviously shit happens, like, there's nothing we can do to change it. But that still has put a tarnished view on that entire year. Even the FIA admitted that entire season... Well, not the entire season, but that race was done incorrectly. It's just not enjoyable. You go on and... It's just so toxic and... Yeah, it's not fun to watch anymore. And then you've got dickheads like... I mean... Toto Wolf has his snidey comments as well. But he doesn't publicly act a dick, but he probably is a bit of a dick. But Christian Horner is just an absolute knob. Ooh. Get me back on track. There we go. Yeah, Christian Horner is just an asshole to everyone. It's ridiculous. He has a bloody good disguise behind him. Yeah. So, I gave up on Formula 1 and just started watching the rallying. And I mean... Shit. Uh, I mean, I've watched a couple of I watched about six or seven NASCAR races. Uh, NAS NASCAR was okay. It wasn't great, but it was better than Formula One, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, no, I think it wasn't the fact that they gave penalties for free. It's that... Because all the penalties they gave were justified. To some extent. But it was when certain penalties weren't given for things that should have had penalties. And when a justifiable penalty was given to someone for doing the exact same thing as someone else, but the other person doesn't get in trouble. It's that kind of inconsistency that just meant it was unenjoyable to watch. That kind of makes sense, though. Because, I mean... You should. In theory, I think Formula 1 shouldn't have pit limiters. I think the only reason they have pit limi limiters... Is because otherwise the drivers definitely wouldn't be sticking to that speed limit. The drivers would just say, fuck it, we're going. I'll take the penalty later, thank you. Or whatever. But I don't see why NASCAR needs it because they go at like fairly high speed through the pit lane anyways. And it's just unnecessary tech at the end of the day that messes with the engine. But yeah, honestly though, watching like rallying is just a much better experience for me. Because, I mean, 
there's no way that anyone can blame anyone else for a fault of... Like, if a driver crashes, the only person that driver can blame is themselves. So there's never any drama between drivers. The drivers all are like... They all respect each other because... And there's never any like, Ah, oh, you did this, you did that. Because the drivers are all spread out. There's no way that can physically happen. Um... And, at least publicly, rallying isn't all about politics as well at the moment. I say at the moment because you never know what would happen in the future. But, um... Yeah, like... Oh yeah, an animal could be an option as well. Blame it on the animals. You see that giraffe over there? It was his fault. <laughs> but yeah, there's just, like, there's no physical way for there to be any toxicity when it comes to WRC. That's why I'm enjoying watching it. I don't have to deal with other people's bullshit. I can just watch people race and have fun racing. And, you know, it's enjoyable. Alright, here we go. Sebring. In the Lotus... The only problem I think I've found so far with WRC is um, the app to watch it live isn't the best. So sometimes it does go down, but... Yeah. I mean, the cornering speed of Formula 1 is insane, but... Like, as much as it's awesome to see how fast those cars go around a track, there's only so much you can watch before it's like, well... Give me something new. At least with rallying, right? Every single rally, I think they have, like... A, at least a third of it is new roads. And stuff like that from the last rally. And I mean, this year is the first year that they're actually going hybrid as well for the rally cars. So, that's awesome. I think the, the WRC, though, is probably the reason why. Um, because I've actually put a plan in place once I've finished this series. It's going to be a while. But I know for a fact, once I finish this Forza series, I'm moving on to the WRC series. And playing through every WRC game. It's going to be fun. Woohoo! Jesus Christ, that was sketchy. I wasn't even checking how fast the car was going. We're getting up to about 160, 170.
We gotta get um four videos recorded today. Sooner we're done with this game. Cause I kinda do wanna get this one done with. I wanna go on to the really fast stuff. But we still are nowhere near it. Like the P4, the P3 races and... Oh, sorry, the R4. The race cars. We're nowhere near that stage yet. Shite. You should let it go. Not bad. Not bad. I was on your mind. Not too bad. Coming on to the penultimate lap now. Oh my god, it's actually warm in here now. So, uh, tomorrow and the day after is going to be pretty insane. Right, coming up to final lap. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> I'm so tired, honestly.
Oh, Jesus, nearly lost it. Still on track, though. Looking good. I'm gonna take a result from that. 113, not bad. All right, here we go. Time for Silverstone. And we're off. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. I love slippery tarmac. Sarcasm, obviously. A little bit of rear damage there. Is that a Lamborghini? There we go. Not a bad run. result. Was this the uh, full silver zone track? I think it was, wasn't it? Not too bad, lads. Ah, oh, shit. There you go, not too bad. This thing is extremely loose towards the rear end. I can definitely tell that there's no rear end grip compared to the front. And even then, I'm surprised that the front end has grip. Wow, that Ferrari was not waiting for no one, even if it involved taking me out. Unbelievable. Right, let's try and catch up. F40, you're coming with me. Results. 
results so far. Bum, 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 bum. Looking good. I'm really enjoying uh, driving this at the moment. We had way too much curb there, so ended up losing a substantial amount of time. What the hell happened to my controller there? I have zero clue what just happened. But it's definitely caused me to lose a little bit of time. When I met you in the summer. To my job in sun. We fall loof. As the liter brawn. <laughs> That's like a god tier meme. This dumb shit like that. It gives me the giggles. When I met you in the summer. We fell in love. As the leaves turn brown. And we could be together, baby. As long as skies are blue You act so innocent now But you lie too soon I think something's just bit me on my ankle It really hurts <laughs> Like a bug or something
Can we complete this race under 10 minutes? Something tells me no. That specifically. If we had gone any wider, we would have lost the position. That would have been dreadful. Oh, no. We did it. 9.55. Not too bad. I will take that result. All right, here we go. As soon as I said that, there was a dog that barked outside and it scared the shit out of me. I've had the shit scared out of me. Anyway, seven laps of Laguna Seca. This is going to be hell with this car. I can just predict it. European cars around what is basically a track designed solely for American cars. Yeah, it's going to be horrendous. You basically have to drive this car as if it was an American muscle. Which is extremely uncomfortable, actually. And you still fuck up. Unbelievable. I can't believe this. bad. There we go. Not bad at all. I saw the moon in your eyes. I saw the moon in your eyes. So the prediction for this... Uh, obviously, the last series, I predicted about 75 episodes for Motorsport 1. And it ended up being 67. So it was much shorter than expected. Uh, this one, I'm obviously predicting a little... Maybe one or two less. So I'm predicting 65 episodes for this series. In fact, I don't think I need to predict. I could probably count. Well, so what is this? Episode 45. Sixty-three. No. Seventy... Seventy-two? Yeah, because each event is one episode, and I've got... Twenty-eight left, so yeah, that's... Okay. So yeah, 72 episodes we're going to have of this series, which is fair enough. Um, Motorsport 3, I'm predicting easily 150 episodes. That's going to be a big one. Motorsport 4, I think, is going to be maybe 200 episodes. But Motorsport 3 and 4 combined are probably going to take up more of this series than the rest of the Motorsports and the Horizons put together. So. Eh, maybe not quite the rest of the Motorsports, but still.
Because there was just so many events in those. So, uh, so far, actually not doing too bad. We've got a sizable distance between us and the car behind, so not bad. I saw the moon in your eyes. I saw the moon in your eyes. Nope, we bottled it. And we unbottled it. Not too bad. We're on lap five at the moment so far. The lap of seven laps. Not looking too bad. There we go. Surprisingly, this car's actually flown fairly smoothly through that corkscrew.
Not bad. Oh. Rear wheel sliding off a little bit there. Come on, we got this. And there we go, across the line. Looking good. I'll take my rewards, thank you. There we go, we got a Panzos car and 38 grand. not bad so thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy be sure to leave a like comment down below and subscribe and i will see you in the next one peace out <laughs>